and welcome. We are discussing superconductivity and uh, the, <coughs> in the last lecture we discussed uh, how London equation leads to uh, magnetic field decaying inside a superconductor within a few angstroms of the surface and uh <coughs> so that is a <coughs> uh, that is one uh, basically phenomenological theory which we uh, showed and that uh, was working fairly well to explain certain things. Uh, for example, this uh, 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 decay of uh, magnetic field which means uh, uh, Meissner effect. So, let just to recap what we showed was that the um, uh, London equation can also be written as uh, P plus E A by C equal to 0 basically net momentum uh, being 0 inside which was uh, Bloch's assertion. Uh, and from here uh, one can uh, um, N E V <coughs> uh, uh, V S equal to uh, or equal to uh, minus E A by M C. Uh, so, E A by <coughs> Uh, so, p by, so this is basically p by m uh, uh, so p, uh, velocity is p by m. So, I divide both sides by uh, m and this is what I will get. Okay. So, <coughs> uh, and then uh, times any and that is this equation that um, uh, j uh, equal to minus n uh, so, this S subscript basically means that we are dealing with the superconducting uh, component uh, N S uh, E square by M C uh, times A. So, this is this equation that is uh, written on the left. Uh, if you just take a curl of this equation, uh, you will land up with curl of A here, which is uh, B. So, minus N S E square by M C uh, B this was uh, the London equation. So, in essence uh, from this uh, almost uh, the entire London equation and its consequences follow and uh, <coughs> the uh, this equation uh, as we showed in combination with the equation that 4 pi uh, j by c uh, equal to uh, curl of b. Uh, will lead to this equation uh, uh, del square b equal to 4 pi uh, n s e square by m c square into b. And then we showed that if you take a semi infinite uh, superconducting uh, system. So, this side is uh, superconductor all the way. Uh, uh, totally this is totally superconducting that side all the way and this is the value of b at x equal to 0 and then uh, this side is superconductor entire right hand side uh, x greater than 0 is superconductor. In that case uh, one uh, uh, obtains an equation which is uh, uh, del square b del x square uh, equal to 4 pi n s e square by m c square into b and then immediately we identified that this uh, has to have a dimension of 1 by length square. So, that defines uh, this so called uh, London penetration depth uh, is equal to <coughs> m c square by 4 pi n s e square. So, that is about it uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, that is and that is the decay rate okay, decay by which uh, one third of the is, uh, is already decayed. So, uh, <coughs> and we can we uh, from experimental values uh, if you put it in here you will find that uh, this is a uh, a few within a few angstrom less than 100 angstrom or so. Uh, it depends of course, on the system, uh, 
between 100 and 1000 angstrom this thing, this thing uh, uh, decays in uh, many superconductors in some it can be much it can be large, larger but that is uh, depend that depends on what kind of superconductor uh, you are uh, using so this was the uh, consequences of london equation and we will leave london equation uh, here Uh, at, 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 at one point in history, London equation was the only equation that experimentalists had to fit their data and this was uh, ex quite successful uh, in uh, uh, although it is quite phenomenological, there is no microscopic way of uh, getting at it, but uh, this is uh, this is what it is and it served its purpose. Uh, one goes uh, try goes beyond all these uh, uh, phenomenological uh, theories, one is uh, uh, attempting to uh, get to a microscopic theory of superconductivity because one needs to know the mechanism of superconductivity and that came from uh, three physicists at uh, uh, University of uh, Illinois at Urbana. <coughs> uh, the uh, professor was uh, John Bardeen who is uh, famous for uh, co-discovering uh, semiconductor with Brattain and so on. And, uh, <coughs> So, he and uh, uh, his postdoc uh, uh, Leon Cooper and uh, his graduate student that means PhD student uh, J. Robert uh, Schrieffer, uh, these three people um, uh, found out the correct theory for uh, superconductivity. So, before we go there, uh, it is not that in one go they, they went there, they reached that uh, milestone. Uh, there was a lot of uh, understanding that was developing and one of the major uh, understanding that uh, had to come was uh, the idea of uh, uh, interactions uh, uh, that produce the superconductor. So, the uh, uh, this was realized that superconductivity requires uh, uh, attractive interaction and uh, it was also realized by then that superconductivity is uh, caused uh, by uh, at least there is a major role played by uh, lattice distortions which means phonons. Okay. So, the uh, these all these things were already uh, understood also the uh, thermal conductivity measurements were out at that time. And it was uh, also realized that uh, from these experiments and uh, understandings that uh, there has to be a gap in the spectrum uh, and that uh, there is and that is not like semiconductor. So, this gap in spectrum uh, was something that these uh, people were looking for uh, apart from the fact that they were also trying to understand uh, if there is a binding. And uh, in that uh, Leon Cooper was the first person who showed that indeed electrons uh, two electrons uh, if you put them above Fermi surface and if there is a at is an attractive interaction uh, then they can form a bound state and that is a major major discovery and that is why these pairs are now at now called uh, Cooper pairs because it was he who predicted their existence. So, we will go to all that and fi finally do the uh, BCS theory, but this is how it uh, panned out. Uh, in early 50s. <coughs> so, there is a bit of history, uh, they, they were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1972. So, Bardin um, also realized uh, that there is a electron electron attraction which was also contributed by several other people Frolish for example, uh, electron electron interaction through phonons for example. Uh, <coughs> Cooper solved the famous uh, uh, it says infamous, but it uh, should be famous uh, it is infamous in the sense that it showed that the Fermi C Fermi surface is unstable. So, uh, that is called Cooper problem and Cooper was the first to, to show that in presence of an attractive interaction Fermi surface becomes unstable in a degenerate uh, metallic system. Uh, so, this is what it says an arbitrarily small attractive, inter attractive interaction can cause the Fermi, Fermi liquid state to become un uh, unstable. So, the Fermi surface does not exist anymore. <coughs> okay. 
So, the physics behind the usual superconductors see there are uh, there is now a distinction between the old superconductors and the new superconductors. We will not discuss the new superconductors or their theories at this stage may be at the end we can uh, make some comments about them, but uh, our entire focus is on the old superconductors which means the superconductors that existed before uh, 1986. Uh, and also not this uh, barium bismuth oxide. Uh, so, barium potassium bismuth oxide or uh, so, so those are uh, not uh, being discussed here. <coughs> so, this uh, by normal superconductor one means the ones uh, which are uh, which were known for a long time and whose theory was uh, uh, given by Bardeen, Cooper and Schrieffer. That is why the BCS theory stands uh, uh, carries their name Bardeen, Cooper and Schiffer. <coughs> so, where uh, does it um, uh, come from? So, this is the uh, this is how it is uh, uh, originated. Uh, see the idea is that the electrons are at, uh, repulsive really interacting with each other because they are both negatively charged. So, if you take a bunch of electrons and allow them uh, to be freely interacting, they will just repel from each other and, and move away. So, uh, that is uh, that is something we know it is Coulomb interaction. So, you have to call find an attractive interaction uh, and that was a, a non trivial uh, uh, work and that was eventually found out. So, if electron phonon interaction leads to electron electron attractive interaction there is within parenthesis there is something called retarded. Now, retarded means uh, that it is not instantaneous. Uh, normally, in most interactions that you, you see a Coulomb interaction and all that, uh, the interaction is instantaneous. Okay? Uh, the, if the two particles are, uh, are, are close by, then it is instantaneous. Of course, uh, at if they are further apart, then there is this. Uh, uh, I mean the way we present it in a Hamiltonian is like action at a distance uh, uh, because the the time it takes for uh, for a photon to propagate from one uh, charge to the other uh, to the other is uh, extremely fast. So for all practical purposes, these are uh, 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 <coughs> like uh, instantaneous interaction. But here. Uh, the interaction is retarded in time. So, the interaction happens uh, 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 as I will show uh, uh, separated in time. And the electron pulls the surrounding. So, the physical understanding that goes uh, to explain this is that uh, suppose an electron uh, uh, is somewhere here, uh, it pulls the surrounding ions towards itself causing the area around it to become positively charged. Uh, because the ions are all positively charged because electrons have come out of the ions and become free in a metal. So, so this distortion is something like a positively charged lattice distortion around this uh, electron. Now, this electron uh, uh, affect this, this electron by distorting the, this lattice uh, here affects the motion of other electrons. So, another electron which is passing by this uh, will see this uh, ex excess positive charge around here and get attracted towards it. So, that is what uh, uh, <coughs> uh, what is uh, causing the attractive interaction. But of course, if the electron was still sitting here, uh, then the repulsive interaction will be very strong and the other electron will be uh, repelled. So, what was what, what one realizes is that after distorting the lattice, this electron has left. So, let us look at this picture. Uh, this electron uh, comes comes in, distorts the lattice uh, here. So, it attracts these other uh, uh, positively charged ions uh, towards it, distorts the lattice and then this electron moves away. And when the, the next electron comes, it sees the distorted lattice and it does not see the other electron here it sees the distorted lattice with a net uh, slight positive charge around it and uh, then it gets attracted towards that position. So, it as if there is a, an attractive interaction between this electron and that electron, but that electron has now gone far away. 
so it is uh, the that in that kind of an interaction uh, is called a retarded interaction because the other electron is no longer there it is not like a contact interaction or a uh, or an interaction which is almost instantaneous it is an interaction which happens after the first particle has left so there is a time delay between the uh, first particle passing the uh, that point and the second part second electron uh, coming in to to experience that attraction <coughs> okay so so this was basically realized and uh, lots of people contributed to its uh, to the understanding of it uh, frolish migdal uh, are some of the names that you might hear uh, in this uh, if you look at the literature of this and uh, of course so that uh, led to the uh, foundation for generating an attractive interaction but it is a strange kind it is retarded it is retarded in time so the 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 reason it works is primarily because the phonons uh, or the lattice vibrations are much slower uh, the lattice the ions move much much slower at a much much slower pace than the electrons so the fast moving electron has gone away uh, distorting the lattice and now the lattice will take uh, quite some time to relax back and that is what is shown here uh, so, so this deformation for example caused by the first uh, electron uh, peaks uh, at a distance from the electron which is uh, Vf into 2 pi by omega d Vf is the Fermi velocity of the electrons and omega d by is the phonon frequency. See any distortion particularly local distortion uh, can be written down as a, as a sum of uh, combination of many many phonons. Okay and uh, so these phonons have to relax these lattice distortion relaxes that means the phonons are uh, uh, generated and uh, uh, then the first first electron generates these phonons and the second electron when it comes it doesn't see the first electrons but it sees these uh, phonons uh, these lattice vibrations and uh, it absorbs these vibrations and then the, the net effect uh, is uh, a um, an attractive interaction which peaks around uh, this th this kind of a, a distance so so the attraction is uh, uh, felt uh, uh, around uh, this this distance <coughs> and this distance being fairly large uh, you can imagine that uh, the screening which is uh, operative in a metal which screens out the coulomb interaction the repulsive coulomb interaction um, has already screened out the interaction uh, repulsive interaction the bare coulomb 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 interaction between electrons the repulsive coulomb interaction uh, has been screened out uh, within a distance much less than this distance. So, that means the electrons uh, uh, do not feel the repulsive interactions because they are already gone far away and the second electron uh, basically feels the attractive interaction. So, the repulsion is screened away uh, screened out and the attractive interaction is still operating uh, at a much longer uh, time and space uh, scales. So, that is how the, uh, the attraction is uh, generated uh, in a very interesting manner uh, that is very unique in this in this case and it is the conspiracy of these uh, speeds of electron the speed of the lattice relax relaxation the screening all of it work uh, in such a so works in such a way that uh, somehow and uh, finally there is a region of uh, uh, energies uh, uh, frequencies or time scales where you have a small weak uh, net attractive interaction so that is what uh, generates this uh, attractive interaction that is required to form uh, pairs and eventually uh, a superconductor. <coughs> so, quantum mechanically you can think of this as exchange of phonons and that is how it is done. So, an electron uh, um, uh, with k wave vector k 1 comes it goes away with uh, emitting phonons which means it creates a local distortion lots of phonons are emitted and this uh, so it goes away. Uh, releasing a photon a phonon phonons of momentum k say and uh, then uh, 
uh, another electron uh, absorbs that phonon and uh, goes away with the uh, wave vector uh, k plus uh, k 2 plus k and you have to then sum over all plus all k's uh, to get this local distortion and that is uh, the way the mathematics uh, works in quantum mechanics and this is not what we are going to do, but this is this kind of uh, processes uh, lead to this attractive interaction and that is found to be retarded in time only in a certain range of frequency uh, it, it, it works and see, since the range of frequency is small if you Fourier transform the range of time or simply time and energy uncertainty will tell you that if something is narrow in frequency that will be very large in time. So, that is exactly what happens that these interactions are retarded they operate over a large time scale <coughs> and that means large distance also. Okay. So, this is what uh, now sets us up uh, to do the uh, famous Cooper problem and uh, 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 that is what I will motivate now how Cooper solved this problem. <coughs> so, what Cooper did is very simple in that is in the sense uh, that it is not simple the idea was fantastic, but the calculation was fairly simple in the sense that uh, see this is a many body problem there are 10 to the power 23 electrons uh, they are interacting with each other uh, there is an attractive interaction and so on. Now, the, the question that uh, Cooper uh, uh, set himself up to answer was that supposing uh, there is this Fermi C I mean of course, there is a Fermi C in the metal and suppose I take two electrons just above this Fermi C which is where I can uh, take it take them out because inside the Fermi C all the st uh, states are filled up. So, we can take two electrons outside the Fermi C above Fermi level and then allow them to interact with uh, this attractive interaction. And remember the states below the Fermi surface Fermi level are uh, all occupied. Okay. So, that is what is uh, shown here. So, that means again the same uh, idea comes in that the presence of a Fermi surface has a dramatic effect in the sense that it restricts the scattering phase space to a very minimal uh, uh, region and uh, that uh, it, it, the from the enormously large phase space that you have uh, in a free electron gas in this situation in a metal uh, you do not have that. So, the, the there is a huge restriction uh, uh, in the uh, phase space available for electrons to scatter into. So, that is what uh, uh, we will discuss and uh, so the the problem that Cooper uh, took up was as uh, I mean, let me repeat is just two electrons above the Fermi level uh, interacting uh, via a retarded uh, attractive interaction and uh, there is a Fermi surface below to restrict the phase space. <coughs> so, this is, a, is almost a cartoon problem in the sense that there are these enormous number of other electrons. So, this uh, uh, th th all of them are attractive uh, uh, are uh, uh, interacting via these attractive interactions and so on and so forth, but Cooper's problem uh, is just this that uh, it is a Fermi surface plus two electrons above it attracting via a retarded uh, interaction. Now, let us just uh, look at it k 1 and k 2 are the, the um, <coughs> two electrons we have added to the system. So, there is a Fermi C and two electrons are added just above it and this um, to these two electrons are um, interacting uh, via this attractive interaction their momentum uh, uh, momenta are k 1 and k 2 and energies are e k 1 and e k 2 e k 1 and e k 2 are pretty close to the uh, Fermi energies just above the Fermi level. And similarly k 1 k 2 are also pretty close to the Fermi Fermi momentum. Okay. So, that is what this picture shows. <coughs> so, the k 1 plus k 2 is uh, so, so after they are scattering after they interact uh, via this interaction they scatter into states k 1 prime and k 2 prime and by momentum conservation uh, the k 1 plus k 2 and k 1 prime plus k 2 prime uh, is equal to k which is uh, conserved. 
Now, let us look at uh, the case space uh, which is a restricted uh, to a shell with an energy thickness of h cross omega d, because the attractive interaction uh, works as, as we showed in the previous uh, discussion that it works in a very narrow uh, range of space and the corresponding energy range over which it, uh, uh, attract, it, it uh, operates is basically the phonon frequencies. right? So, the phonon frequency is uh, omega d y and so the energy range over which this interaction works is uh, extremely narrow and that is uh, this uh, h cross omega d y. Okay. And uh, so, the, the, the problem now is that uh, uh, so the k states are uh, the k states uh, that that, are, uh, that we are interested in this k1 and k2 see look at k1 k1 is this and k2 is uh, uh, minus of k2 is this so k2 is around this this direction uh, so so let me just uh, draw uh, k1 and k2 so k1 is in, is in this direction and k2 is in this direction okay and k2 this is k 1. Okay. So, that is what uh, we are uh, we have and these two interact via that attractive interaction which operates only in an energy range h cross omega d y about the uh, Fermi surface Fermi level. <coughs> okay. So, we can uh, so then let us look at uh, this. Uh, so, what has been done here in this picture is uh, one has drawn two different Fermi surface corresponding to the two different uh, electrons for example, suppose they are centered here and here and these are the corresponding Fermi surfaces and two and their separation is this, this k. So, k is how much? Uh, k is uh, <coughs> so, this is the k is k 1 minus k 2. So, k equal to k 1 minus k 2. So, the two centers are separated out now by a distance k and now you see the the reason we are doing all these things is one one wants to find out what is the value of k for which the scattering is maximum the phase space available for scattering is maximum. So, that is what we are trying to find out. So, this uh, so, the region over which the interaction uh, these, these two spheres interact these two circles interact uh, in, in three dimension of course, this is a sphere uh, is uh, uh, this narrow shaded region here and shaded region here. So, these these two regions where these two rings in, uh, intersect one is here and uh, another is here. So, these are the two regions where the electrons will interact and one wants to find out when is that area of that region maximum and you can immediately see that area is maximum when these two spheres basically coincide with each other. So, that means, uh, that means this entire annulus annular region then becomes the region of uh, phase space where the scattering can, can happen. So, so, there was the number of energy reducing phonon exchange processes the scattering means that there are phonon exchanges that are happening which reduce the energy. Uh, this area uh, where this is uh, happening is maximized uh, when these two, these two spheres uh, these two circles basically merge with each other that means k equal to 0. So, that is the uh, upshot of this uh, this discussion that there is this region uh, of uh, uh, phase space where uh, if k 1 is equal to k 2 uh, <coughs> sorry this is k 1 plus k 2 because uh, this is the uh, distance. So, this is just the opposite of minus k 2 right. So, this is k 1 and this is minus minus k 2. So, this is k 1 plus k 2 and so they will then k 1 plus k 2 equal to 0 means k 1 equal to minus k 2. So, that is the region uh, that is the restriction 
on which around which the scattering will be maximum. So, if you can set up your k uh, k's in such a way that k 1 and k 2 are just the opposite of each other uh, that will give you the maximum uh, scattering uh, <coughs> and that is what uh, then that will of course, reduce the, mac, uh, the energy uh, uh, the maximum because that these are the processes uh, which reduce energy uh, when they exchange these phonons and uh, so that uh, so we will stick to this that the two electrons have their momenta opposite of each other and the rest of the um, regions i mean for other momenta the uh, amplitude of this this uh, process is much less compared to this one so this is the one uh, we concentrated this is the one uh, cooper also concentrated and uh, for physical reasons as you can see that this is what uh, gives you the maximum redu reduction in energy so that will uh, be the region we should be concerned with so then let us uh, follow the uh, the argument and the calculations of Cooper uh, as he did. 